um, wanted to kind of just quickly go over one of the last lectures that we have for the semester, um, and that would be dam removal science. And obviously this has some application to um, the, the natural disaster of flooding. Um, there's a lot of uh, movement right now to, to remove uh, dams from um, a lot of the, the waterways that, that we have in the U.S. Uh, some of the dams are, are certainly antiquated. We've talked about that uh, and don't even uh, serve the purpose that they may have served in the past, but they still have um, some value for uh, communities for a variety of different reasons and also maybe ecologic values as well. So just want to kind of briefly go over again another uh, short lecture but but want to kind of touch on some of these things. So um, they do serve a variety of purposes and obviously you know they can they provide us with recreation, agricultural uh, storage of water, um, provide us with some domestic water supply, uh, flood control, hydropower, um, and then, you know, just as, a, as water for industry. So certainly have some values, um, but uh, maybe there's in certain places, some of those value, the, the value of, of the dam may not, uh, may not be the same as it was when the dam was in, initially constructed. So I want to kind of think a little bit about what the purpose is of a dam is, what the purpose of a dam is. Um, and in some communities, these are really, really important for um, the disaster that may come. Uh, we've discussed a little bit about the frequency of disasters and the, um, the severity of some disasters. And um, also keeping in mind that some disasters, uh, while these could be great flood control devices, they could also be very prone to um, other, uh, other disasters that we've talked about throughout this, the class, earthquakes or um, uh, hurricanes, uh, as we saw with Katrina, some of the, some of the um, uh, water management systems failed there in, in Louisiana. So, um, so let's kind of step through uh, why is there kind of a movement to, to remove dams and, and in no way, again, I want to stress that dams have, uh, probably have a purpose um, in some situations and then in other situations, maybe that purpose is, is no longer there. But some of these structures are aging, which does pose a problem. Um, and uh, so there's safety issues there, okay, um, with dams breaking, um, and uh, you know there are financial implications. Sometimes it's cheaper to remove than to restore or relicense a dam, and sometimes it's cheaper to not do anything. And that's what um, uh, some communities have decided to do. And um, and and then you know also you know there is great cost to maintaining a dam. So we want to keep that in mind. And then obviously, um, you know there's some value ecologically, biologically. Uh, for dam removal, you, one could argue that you know the the system is is now a reservoir system, and and so uh, maintaining that is is also important. Um, and then socially, you know, we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about what are the social implications of dams. So elements of dam removal, obviously, there's a physical, ecological, biological, and social, uh, or and restoration pieces. Um, so some, some key physical pieces, um, obviously dams uh, regulate flow. And this really comes to, we talked quite a bit about watersheds and how um, we can have some indication how flooding might occur uh, as we learn a little bit about watershed characteristics. Um, watershed, dams are obviously able to manage flow and um, they can control flow. And so when you may have an extreme uh, event on a hydrograph uh, where you would typically get flooding, we can regulate that uh, with, with, uh, some, 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 with dams and, and control the amount of flow in the rivers and, and sometimes control or manage flooding. Obviously, you know, the, the concern is that these, these would, would uh, the dams would fail or um, water would flooding with the, the water would exceed what the dam can handle and those are concerns so um, 
keep going here. So some of the physical aspects of, of, of dams, also we have to keep in mind there's a lot of sediment that builds up behind a dam. So again, with a dam breaking, um, or, or even the storage capacity, uh, you, the sediment becomes an issue. So as sediment builds up in a dam over years, you have less and less capacity to be able to store water. On some of the bigger dams, maybe that's less of an issue, especially in the West, as we see these dams are, are not nearly, nearly at capacity, the larger dams, but smaller dams for sure. Um, capacity is diminished to be able to store water. And uh, also, if you, you, if you had a, a collapse, then you'd really um, be releasing a lot of that sediment debris um, and, and uh, whatnot downstream. So more on that sediment, you know, what do you do with that sediment behind the impoundment when uh, the decision is made that we no longer need that, you know, we no longer need the, the dam. Um, and so there's concern around it being toxic. Um, you know, how do you uh, appropriately draw down a, a, a lake or river? And this can be seasonally as well. Uh, you know, sometimes we want to draw down a, a, a reservoir during a period of time, maybe at a certain time of the season, a certain time of year, and then uh, so that we have capacity to handle maybe runoff at another time of year so that we can manage flow. Uh, so thinking about how do we, how do we uh, draw down a, a reservoir is also important when we manage flooding. Physical elements. Um, so we, we've talked a little bit about that riparian zone. That's the area near a river. And again, uh, the health of that riparian zone and having a robust and, and, and deep, I would say, uh, riparian zone um, where the, 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 the vegetation is along the banks of the river is really, really important. Um, uh, so, you know, as we kind of manipulate a river to manage flooding, uh, we can um, see changes to that alt that riparian zone where we could potentially get um, water pushed up into that riparian zone or uh, if we're, we're draining uh, um, water, uh, we could we could see water recede out of that uh, riparian zone. So some things to consider. We've talked a little bit about stream morphology or that's the shape or the function uh, or the, 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 the look of the stream. Um, streams certainly have different uh, ways that they behave, braided streams uh, versus linear channels, uh, wetland areas, so stream morphology uh, or how kind of that that river kind of looks um, and how that water is directed uh, is, is really important to consider when we're talking about flooding and flood management. Obviously the ecological elements, uh, you know, um, we've got fish that are trying to get upriver. We've got uh, certainly all the species that may exist in and around a, uh, uh, a river, the birds, the, the beavers, the, you know, the whatever might be living in and near the trees and in that riparian zone. Uh, so adjusting the flows uh, to be able to manage flooding uh, in one way or another and, and be that with, with dams or, or um, I guess it would be with dams. Um, can, can certainly have an impact on uh, the species around a uh, river, so in that riparian zone. Um, some just uh, biological things, you know, I, we're talking, I was talking previously ecologically around uh, the ecology around the river and how that's impacted by flows. We also need to remember there's uh, a lot of uh, interactions of species that exist in the river. So here at this level, we're talking about what are the bugs uh, that are at the foundation of the food chain in, uh, in a river. And uh, again, um, that's certainly impacted by flows. So when flows are modified as a result of dams, uh, the, 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 the uh, macroinvertebrates, which those are the bugs that are happen to be in the bottom of the uh, bottom of rivers, those are impacted by flows. So some social elements, just to kind of uh, kind of work towards the end here, um, just some social elements that, that we need to consider. Uh, dams certainly, um, you know, 
there's a, there's a cost to maintaining a dam. There's a cost to having a dam. But again, there's some great benefits to be able to manage water. Um, and there's implications as we've gone over. Uh, so, so, and, and also we need to keep in mind, there's some recreational value that people really enjoy dams in some, some parts of the, the country. Um, dams are, are, are uh, certainly a place where, where people recreate more than maybe um, when, when lakes are probably not uh, as available. And that's kind of um, probably more along the lines of the area that we're in right now in the, U- in, in, uh, the Western U.S., where we see, uh, we in Colorado we have very few lakes in most parts of Colorado comparatively to like a place like Minnesota, where there's tons of lakes. So the recreational value of having uh, dams is there, um, because you don't have that uh, the lakes otherwise. Um, so private or public access, um, you know, you know who gets to enjoy that stuff. Uh, is there a safety and liability issues with uh, flood management using dams? Um, and, and in some cases there might be, uh, or I would say there, there probably is uh, always some safety or liability issue. How that's managed is certainly dependent on uh, the dam owner or, or the community. And this next bullet is kind of interesting. Some communities certainly have a sense of symbolism or sentimentality uh, around a dam. Um, I've seen this a lot in the Northeast where dams were associated with maybe um, uh, like a water wheel that, the, that happens to be right in the middle of town or, um, or you know, old factory buildings that, that maybe use some of the hydro, high, uh, hydroelectric power. Um, and, and that's kind of part of the, the town's identity. Um, and, and, uh, and so that's kind of something to consider. And then um, also, you know, the aesthetics. You know, does the, does the town prefer having that river uh, and that safety and security of, of maybe some flood control versus a free-flowing river? Um, so all of these are, are key social elements. As far as restoration goes, there's active and passive restoration. If we did remove a dam, what happens? Um, And so how do we uh, kind of blend these two actively uh, thinking about um, going ahead and and returning an ecosystem or a community to to a river kind of uh, setting versus passive and just letting nature do its job, okay? And so I won't go through each one of those bullets, but things to consider just when we're, we're thinking about um, the value of dams and whether they fit into a community. And again, there's, I want to stress here, there's pros and cons, um, but they certainly have a place when we're talking about flood control. Um, and uh, or, uh, uh, it's a topic that needs to be discussed when we're talking about flood control and, and may be appropriate in certain times and places. Um, and then uh, in just some conclusions here, dam removal can be used to restore a river close to approximations of its native ecosystem and also add, you know, whatever the native, whatever the community would want. Um, and, and they have a huge value in terms of flood management or flood control. Uh, at the same time, there are concerns with, with dams uh, that, are, that are reasonable. So... Um, I, I uh, kind of wanted to keep this brief and just wanted to go over this as um, we start to think about, as we've been thinking about flood management in terms of natural disasters, you know, dams are certainly a key part of that. There's a lot of discussion around there, uh, around the topic of dam removal, and we've talked a little bit about uh, the number of dams in the U.S. So wanted to kind of discuss the science around dam removal um, whether it has application, whether it doesn't have application. And again, that's a case-by-case basis, but there are some pros and cons that we kind of have to think through. So uh, again, that's the, the brief lecture on, on dam removal science, and I um, hope you guys have a wonderful week.